This game was created by one developer and two voice actors. It is a psychology simulator taking place in 1925, before Hitler came to power. It is a game about resolving Hitler's trauma and preventing catastrophe via therapy and psychology. The facts in the game are historically accurate. During the marketing period, people accused the developer of being a Nazi apologist. He's not. He is Czech, and Hitler murdered tens of thousands of his ancestors. This game is an experiment. You are using methods that were available back then. It is a conversational game, and you can finish it in under an hour. In each therapy session, you get three to eight choices that influence the ending. Hitler was a human too, just like you. If you distance yourself from him by dehumanizing him and calling him a monster, you are doing psychological damage to yourself. In order to develop your shadow, you need to realize and admit that given the right life circumstances, you could become someone like Hitler too. You are about good and evil. And if we don't admit that someone like Hitler could come again, we are doomed to repeat history. Enjoy the game. Hello, Mr. Hitler. It is very nice to meet you. Guten Tag. Well, you can lie down on the sofa there. And uh, what brings you into therapy today? Well, I just returned from giving a public speech, and my colleagues mentioned that they seem too angry. Once I overheard them talking about me, and they called me an angry little man. And do you agree with them? I don't think so. They lack willpower, so I don't really value what they have to say anyway. They are just minions. Uh, when they commented on your being angry, uh, do you know what you were talking about during the speech? About the state of Germany. It was very humiliating for our country to lose the Great War. And now we have to pay reparations. And our army is restricted. Our economy is in shambles. I feel humiliated. And someone is at fault here. Well, yes, that must feel humiliating. I noticed you mentioned Germany as your country, but on the telephone you mentioned that you are Austrian. I am, but I refuse to fight for Austria-Hungary. I absolutely hate them, but I would do anything for Germany. There is no better nation. Why do you feel that Germany is the best nation? It's an idea I got when I was listening to Wagner. I had it for some time, you see, but later I learned it was called Pan-Germanism. I want to unite all the German-speaking people into one nation. We have to give back what is ours. They took it from us in the Great War. It was a horrible loss. And when did you make the decision to fight for Germany instead of Austria-Hungary? It was in my adolescence when I thought of this. My father loved Austria-Hungary. He worked in the Austrian civil service and he wanted me to do the same thing. We fought a lot about that. What a horrible drunk he was. I hated him. But at least he taught me not to trust the authorities. Anyway, I enlisted in the Bavarian army and they accepted me. So I was able to slip in through the cracks without a problem. No one noticed. You say you don't trust authorities. But how do you explain that you are an authority yourself? Should the people distrust you because of that? Distrust me? Of course not. I am reliable and trustworthy. It is the others with the powers that are not, especially in the financial and the education systems. Do you want to talk about your father more? No. I don't even want to think about him right now. Okay. Can you tell me about your war experience? What the war was like? Well, I was a messenger, so I was pretty safe most of the time, except for when we were at Vervik in Belgium, when the British attacked. They used the yellow gas and I could not put on the mask in time. My eyes were burning and I could not see a thing. They took me to this field hospital, where the doctor said I was just acting. How dare he? The doctor was nothing but another authority that made me distrust all of them. I could not believe this. 
I was horribly scared. I felt so helpless. I was never this close to dying before. And the doctor tells me I was just acting. And the horrors I saw at Passchendaele. I could not sleep for months. I think this experience could be what you are struggling with. It is common among soldiers to experience an exceptional emotional distress that could sometimes lead to temporary blindness. If your nervous system was overloaded, it could have ceased to take any further input. The doctors today are calling it shell shock. That would explain a lot, but I still feel humiliated sometimes. I should not have been that weak. I should have been stronger than that. It is normal for people to experience humiliation when having shell shock. Part of what our nervous system does is control emotions. Does this humiliation show up in other areas of your life? I don't want to talk about this right now. You said that you think that losing the war was somebody's fault? Well, while I was in prison, I had a lot of time to think about this. And I am positive it was the Jews, the Marxists, and the Bolsheviks. They stabbed us in the back. They are a cancer. They are a deadly virus to the beautiful and the lovely body of Germany, infecting us from the inside. I despise them. Parasites, they disgust me. I wish I could just eliminate them from the surface of the earth. The Jews are involved with the communists in a conspiracy to take over the world. I think that three quarters of all the communists are Jews. This combination of Jews and Marxists has already been successful in Russia, and now it threatens the rest of Europe. You seem very passionate about this. But if I recall correctly, you came here because your colleagues described some of your speeches as being very angry. Uh, this could be what your colleagues are referring to. I think you need to be patient about establishing your political program. You won't get very far if you alienate the public. After all, they elect you. And for that, they need to trust you and see you as a responsible leader. If you start talking about eliminating Jews, you won't get anywhere. Maybe you didn't choose the ideal approach here. What do you suggest, then? It is not just me that thinks this, I hope you know. The Sherman people also think the Jews are to blame. It has been this way since I became the leader of the Workers' Party. I hear the anti-Semitic remarks everywhere I go. You must know how long it took the Prussian generals to prepare for the last war, and that revolutionaries like Mussolini need the will of the people behind them. Slogans, especially ideological ones like anti-Semitism and anti-clericalism, won't bring starving people to the barricades. Why do you and your followers spread hatred toward Jews and papal authority? We can be political opponents, but if you want to lead an entire nation into a better future, we need one another. Bring back the old order of God. How about you write your vision down? It would help you plan for your future. I've already done this while I was in prison. I had plenty of time to write my book, even though I am not so good at the writing. When I am speaking in public, the right word always comes natural to me, but not so much when I am writing. Well, that you are already writing your thoughts down is good. Well, let's use that to identify your main thoughts and feelings during the day. I want you to keep a daily journal of people and situations that trigger an emotional response in you. Maybe other people are seeing these things you are doing as anger. If we journal this, we can have a better understanding of what they see and what you see. Record your feelings and we will talk about it in the next session. Very well. I will give this a try. Uh, you didn't tell me about your prison experience yet. Uh, what happened? I was supposed to be executed for my role in the beer hall pooch, but they didn't know I would use the trial as a showcase for my political views. It was free publicity, and I won. I managed to get the sentence down from execution to just five years imprisonment, 
and they let me go after a few months for good behavior. I also read a lot, so it was basically a free education at the state's expense. I read Henry Ford's autobiography and he made a lot of sense when he talked about the Jews. It is the Jews, after all, who governs the American stock exchange, which every year makes the Jews more and more the controlling masters of a nation of 120 million. There is only a single great man, Henry Ford, that still maintains his full independence from them, and they hate him for it. Tell me more about the Beer Hall Putsch. Well, I got around 2,500 members of my party together, and we planned to overthrow the local government. The police got involved, some people died, and I escaped and hid in my press spokesman's house. I couldn't take the loss, you see, and I almost committed suicide, but his wife, she talked me out of it, and then I was arrested. And are you still having suicidal thoughts? No, of course not. I was desperate back then. That was a long time ago, you see. And now I have the support of my followers, and they actually listen to me now. I will definitely use the advice you gave me today to adjust my political program. I am glad to hear that. Well, we are at the end of our time. Why don't we stop here? We will talk in the next session about the other issues you mentioned, but make sure you bring me at least one journal so we have something to work with. Did you write any journals since we last saw each other? Actually, no. I didn't find time to do this, but I remember one event from the past when I was in emotional stress, and I am sure of the cause. Okay, great. Can you describe the event? I was on a date with a girl at the cafe. She was around 18 years old, and we were talking about my paintings. You see, I wanted to follow a career as a painter, but they didn't accept me anywhere. So I had to look for us a face to get into the business. And at this cafe, as luck would have it, there was a local gallery owner, this very known guy. Fortunately, I had a few of the paintings in my briefcase, so I had something to show him. But when I showed them to him, he basically told me that my watercolor paintings were not worth anything. This wasn't fair to me. I felt horrible, and I walked away. I tried to talk with the girl about it, but when she tried to comfort me and tell me that my paintings were not so bad, I exploded. My skills were way better than this Jewish gallery owner. He had no idea what he was talking about. I taught myself how to paint when I was nine. And this dumb cough, who had only the former education, had the nerve to tell me that my paintings were bad? Just a pattern I've noticed in the last few sessions we've had. You tend to date very young girls, correct? A girl between the age of 18 to 20 is as malleable as wax. It should be possible for a man, whoever the chosen woman may be, to stamp his own imprint on her. This is all the woman asks for. That is an interesting thought. Why is it important to you to mold the girl to your image? I am not sure. I want to have her all for myself. If I create her, she will be eternally grateful to me. She won't be able to leave me. Can you tell me more about your mother? I really love my mother. She was the most precious person I've known. I loved her very much. She always provided me with everything I wanted. She gave me my own way whenever possible. She admired my watercolors and drawings, and she supported my artistic ambitions. You talk so much softer about her than you do about other things. Tell me more about her. When she died, this devastated me. It was a pain I have never experienced before or again. How did she die? It was breast cancer. I was 18 years old at the time. Her doctor was a Czech Jew, Dr. Edward Bloch. So she was someone you loved very much. Do you blame the doctor for her death? What? No. He was a very kind person, although he was a Jew. He treated my mother free of charge because we had no money at the time. Actually, I sent him a postcard and a painting I made as a thank you. He really was a noble Jew. 
Some time ago I found that he said about me that he never saw anyone so devastated with the grief as me in all of his years in the profession. It seems safe to say that you were very close with your mother and very distant with your father. Could you tell me more about their relationship? My mother was 22 years younger than him. When we moved to the new farm, a big part of the money was taken from her inheritance. She liked to be active and was very joyful. She also understood the economics. She would go to the post office and help slaughter the pigs. My father was away very often, you see. And when he returned home, he was mostly drunk. And he was very dominant, I would say. Mother listened to him. She had no choice. I see. Uh, coming back to the pattern I noticed earlier in your girlfriends, uh, you also tend to date girls much younger than yourself, and as you describe them, they are rather submissive. Do you think you could be unconsciously modeling your relationships after your parents? I've already explained to you my rationale behind the girlfriends before. I do not mean to repeat myself. Okay, I think it is time we end today's session. I will see you next time.